We're back. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! We're back! Kind of an exclusive. Our first ever exclusive, Dylan. I'm really, really excited. We're like, <laughs> we're Oprah now. We're Oprah. <laughs> we are Oprah now. We are Oprah. <laughs> Vanessa James and Eric Radford, both out of retirement, together in a new dream team, figure skating, dynamic duo, taking the world by storm. I didn't see that coming. Well, I. I knew because you know we're friends, but like it's, I didn't see that coming. Did you see that coming? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did see the collab between Beyonce and Lady Gaga happening. Yes, I did. I did. And now we are lucky enough to have both Vanessa and Eric here joining us, guys. Thank you so much for being here with us and for dropping this news exclusively with us for the first time for the skating world to hear. Hello. Wow. Wow, we're wow. back. <laughs> <laughs> so both you and Vanessa have been competitors for so long and you have such successful careers with your respective partners. Vanessa, you're a three-time Olympian, European champion, uh, the first team to win since 1932, seven-time uh, national champion of France. Eric, three-time Olympic medalist, two-time world champion, seven-time Canadian national champion. Why? Why come back? Why not? We are healthy. We are blessed to be in such good shape. And we have this amazing opportunity. We have nothing to lose. Um, Megan and Eric were amazing skaters and an um, excellent couple, like an exceptional couple on the ice in their own right. Morgan and I have accomplished a lot also, but um, this is completely different. It's something that um, we can't compare with anything else or anything that we've done before. And I think that it's just um, an opportunity for us to, to get back into to skating and kind of see what we have to offer to the skating world. I think there's, um, there's room for us, so. I, I think both Vanessa and I, we, just, we wouldn't really have expected. This isn't like, you know, we spent our entire lives reaching that Olympic goal and like we could see into the future, right? And I think that this has come totally out of the blue and out of left field. And it's something that has just manifested in front of us quite easily and without us trying. And I realize that I'm 36. I'm going to be 37 at the Olympics. Uh, you know, that's older than Aliona was. That's older than Humbo Zhao was. And I, of all people, would have been like, <laughs> if anybody had asked me, even, you know, five months ago, I would have been like, no bleeping way. You know, like, it's not going to happen. And it just... It's all, and here it is, like it's, it's all happening. And as you know, my uh, focus is like shifting from like that retirement path that I was forming, you know, after, you know, post Olympics and transitioning out of sport. And I can feel it steering itself back into the, that competitive like lane way, you know, and you guys all know that that sort of laser like uh, pathway you have as you know you start competitions and what training and everything that it involves and what's so amazing is that I can feel a familiarity but it's a totally different it's like a totally different color or a, to a totally different flavor and that's what's so exciting about it for for me it's um, it's like I'm returning home but with a sense of curiosity and exploration to a home that I am familiar with but that I've never been to before Absolutely. And the skating world is, as we are, I'm sure going to be very excited about this because A, skating loves drama and B, you guys from the clips that we've seen look absolutely incredible. Um, you know, as Asher said, you guys are extremely decorated, but together I think you bring something fresh. So how did this happen? You know, like how did this magical partnership come to be? You know, it all started with a stroking pattern during Battle of the Blades. And just for fun, I was like, oh, Vanessa, let's do like backward stroking. And we had somebody film it and we went and we did a circle and we did like a really long stretch and we kind of did it like right through like this patch of hockey players. And they were like, whoa, like you guys are going so fast. And then we watched <laughs> the video and then we watched the video and we were like, huh, wow, that looks really, really good, you know? So I think that was like the very, very beginning of that kind of, huh, that could be something. I don't think any of us were expecting much, um, but being Canadian, 
I got a message from Eric and was like, do you have your Canadian passport? I was like, yes. Well, I had to get it renewed actually. And I was like, why, what are you thinking? He was like, well, I was thinking maybe, let's see, let's not have any expectations, but there's a opportunity for us to go to the Olympics if we're both Canadian, if we're both willing, if we're both healthy and strong. And I said, okay, well, let me come and we'll see how things work out, not expecting anything. And everything just happened so quickly. I wasn't even sure I was gonna get released from France. There were so many things, you know, uh, technique, very different techniques, but um, it just came to fruition so quickly and smoothly. And uh, it's, it's exciting. It's a little overwhelming at times, but it's definitely exciting. We were, we were, we just went out, we had a very like open mind and we were thinking that, um, you know, we could, we could just skate together and uh, skate together and do sh some shows together if it doesn't work out. Uh, Vanessa has contacts with some shows in Europe, you know, at the time with Megan, she had just had uh, her baby um, and she's had, you know, has talked about having another one. Um, and we were, were both in different cities and I just, um, was thinking that maybe there was some other opportunity there that if down the road, uh, you know, if Megan decided she didn't want to do shows anymore, that, you know, I would have other options. And I think that with Vanessa being Canadian, that just was like, oh, okay, well, let's just, you know, skate together. But there's not a whole lot happening in the world with like the pandemic anyway. And we'll just, it'll be something that we can just do for fun and see how it comes together. And then we can kind of just take it from there, you know, and as I said before, just kind of like let the car drive by itself. And if it stays on the road, then great. And if it doesn't, then oh, okay, great too. <laughs> it's clearly a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> so Vanessa, can you explain to me what these last two years have been like? Uh, were you under the impression that your career was over or was coming back still in the back of your head? Oh, no, it was long gone. <laughs> I was like, this is it, I'm done. You know, I mean, it didn't end the way that I would want to. I still feel like I had something to give to skating, like unfinished business, you know? Um, but it was definitely wasn't in the back of my head. Um, I wasn't planning on a comeback. I was transitioning into shows and coaching and things like that. But like I said, it's uh, definitely a one in a lifetime opportunity and that I wanted to take. As uh, both of you and Eric said before, you are actually Canadian. You are like Carmen San Diego with those passports. Uh, so, how how long did the release take uh, from France? Like, can you tell us about that process? Well, it happened so quickly. I think it's it didn't take very long. Maybe a month and a half maximum. I mean, there were discussions between federations, myself with my president Natalie Peshala things like that. But honestly, um, from the time the Federation started really talking, I think it took two weeks. I'm very proud to represent France, but they know that this is um, an amazing opportunity for for me, for, for Canada, and that I've brought a lot to figure skating and for the Federation. So um, I think that they're happy to see me continue, even though it's for another flag in another country. France will always be, you know, very close to my heart. So. That's, that's incredible that it happened so fast because I know you've been talking to you before. There's been like when people get released, sometimes there's like attacks on them or like it's very, uh, uh, messy, very cumbersome. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, with um, Aliona and Bruno, it was a long process. I think that um, it took two years for him to be released and quite a bit of uh, compensation financially so i went through it with luba too it can, it can be it can be complicated so yeah. i think um like you both said it, it kind of things have just kind of happened and come to fruition and the universe has pointed you in this direction clearly if it took two weeks that's pretty awesome so uh, you know on that note you guys have like more or less done it all in the sport given that and and given what you just talked about where does that motive, where's the motivation going to come from? The biggest thing for me is just, it's like a, a feeling of exploration. And I, I think that for, for any uh, athlete that's been in, in a pair, whether you're an ice dancer or a pair skater, and you've gone from one partner to another, there's just such a different, a complete different feeling when you skate, when you do elements, how you interact, what your chemistry is. 
even the feeling when you're just stroking around the ice, uh, how you interact and overcome obstacles together, uh, when we start competing, learning each other's uh, groove and everything. And I think that um, I see an opportunity to be able to uh, express myself in my own skating in a completely different way uh, than I have, have ever been able to do. And that's something that I'm really excited about. And I think that sort of curiosity and again, that sense of exploration is what intrigues me the most. It's what makes me very excited. And just to see where that, where are our limits? How far can we go? What can we do artistically? What stories can we tell together? How can we use and explore our chemistry? Like there's just so many unknowns that we get to learn in this journey. And I mean, that's so exciting. And especially to do it at this point in my career where I probably will have the deepest appreciation I possibly can have for everything that, for something like this to happen at this point in my life. Like, it's just, like Vanessa said, it's a real blessing. I think, I think you should do the Meghan Markle Prince Harry story for a program, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sow cow or were you sow cow? Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, Amazing. because we've had so many conversations with you, Eric, uh, you know, we even had one uh, two weeks ago uh, for Worlds. Uh, all of our would you rather questions have all been predicated on your <laughs> lack of enthusiasm to do run throughs. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, yeah, I know. And Maybe inevitably, you, are... you usually picked not doing the run through. <laughs> I know. Even now, I probably still feel the same. Yeah, that's where Vanessa comes in. Yeah. yeah. I, I think we're both kind of dreading that first long program, which is natural, I think, for any athlete, but I think even more so for us because it's been so many years. But um, I think, like we said, it's a process. This entire journey is a process, and we're going to take it, you know, one step at a time, learn about each other. We get along really well. Um, we have a great connection every day. We're very surprised. We say, oh, that was a great day. Or like yesterday was a great day too. So every day seems to be like a stepping stone to something greater and better. And uh, we're both very supportive of each other's feelings. We also know that we are older. So, you know, if a day we need to take it easier, we were, we'll take it easier. There's so much for us to work on and to progress and to, to discover together. And being such a new couple and plus, I mean, we've seen it done before, people making a comeback, Tessa and Scott, um, who else? I mean, Aliona, other time, you know, many times with different partners, um, Tatiana and Max, a few years. So we've seen it done before, but never the year of the Olympics and never with new partners, you know, like completely different partners. We're going to discover together and learn together and support each other through it. So, so you guys are supporting each other. Who's going to be your outside support group? Who are you working with or where are you training? Uh, we'll be tra training in, in Montreal, in St. Julie. <clears throat> our, our main coaches will be uh, Julie Marcotte and Ian Connolly. Um, and choreographically, we'll do one uh, program with Julie and then one program with uh, Guillaume Cesarin and Sam Schoenard. And have you guys already started a selection process of the music and the programs? Are they kind of set in stone or are they? They're just set in stone not too long ago, yeah. We haven't started the process, but um, we'll be starting our long program next week, yeah. Um, in a few days, we'll see. And uh, yeah, that, I think that was the hardest thing for us is to, because we've done so many programs, each of us, to different types of music, um, so many different styles. We never really skated to the same style of music, but so we're creating and merging and meshing our styles. And I think it's going to be something that's really beautiful and creative and um, something people haven't seen before. And if you think about it too, it's, you know, usually you have like a pool of ideas and you're like, oh, okay, let, let's do this one and we'll save that one for next year. But there is no saving for next year. It's like, this is it. It's all like now. So we have to make the right, the, like the right choice or our best choice right now. Um, so it was a little bit more challenging. There's like a little bit more pressure to choose the perfect music. Definitely. We'll see a lot of um, pair teams going back to previous programs, fine tuning them. You know, they were able to see what works for them, what doesn't work for them, judges feedback and things like that. 
and we're just being thrown into the deep end. But <laughs> good that we have some experience, you know. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, it was a process because we don't want to just skate to music to skate to it because we like it. We wanted to have meaning to both of us. Um, we want to tell a story. So I think that was the, the hardest thing for us to, to kind of figure out and to find music that suits us and tells our stories. So um, I think we'll see. We'll see what everyone thinks. I'm sure it'll be amazing. <laughs> we're, we're all looking very forward to it. Um, when, we're, when will you be debuting them? Like, what does your season look like? And what do your goals look like for this season? Um, I think that we want to compete as much as possible throughout the season. So I think we'll be looking to maybe start at Summer Provincials here in Quebec in August. Um, maybe a Senior B, hopefully two Grand Prix, potentially Grand Prix Final, Nationals, and just keep on going from there. So in that rundown, Eric, I we were missing the uh, the big elephant in the room, which is the Olympics. Um, what are your goals for that? Are you going to be able to compete there? Give us a lowdown on, on your vibe for heading into the Ollies. Well, our goal is obviously to, to go to the Olympics. We'd love to go to the Olympics. And I think that's any athlete's uh, goal. We don't know what is going to happen on the way. Um, any surprise could come up, it could be injury, it could be, we're not as good as we think we will be. <laughs> but, you know, it's definitely a goal, it's a dream for us to, you know, get to the Olympics and hopefully Olympic medal, things like that. But um, it's, it's a process. So we're gonna take it step at a time, you know, see how nationals go. <laughs> but so now while uh, Dylan and I, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be very uh, excited by this news. There may be some people who are less enthusiastic with you coming back. Because uh, you, could, you could say that it's coming at like a contentious time, given that we just had Worlds, uh, COVID Worlds during that for a qualifying spot, uh, gained by two pair teams, um, Evelyn Walsh and Trent Michaud, Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinaro. And prior to this announcement, we were definitely thinking they would be the teams to go to the Olympics kind of unchallenged. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to direct this question to you, Eric, because you've worked with both both teams in a way. Have you spoken to either of those pair teams? And if so, what were their responses? Uh, yeah, I mean, I spoke to Evelyn and Trent uh, right after Vanessa got her release and um, uh, Julie spoke with uh, Kirsten and Michael right around the same time um, because you know they are my close friends and uh, when I when I initially posted that video way back in November of me and Vanessa just skating together for fun and you know Kirsten was like are you are you coming back and I think she was probably half joking and at that time I had zero intention of coming back and and then it, it actually it all ended up happening. So I, I just wanted to be very upfront with them because I do care about them. And I, I know that this uh, decision could sort of shift our friendship in a way. And I, so yeah, I, I talked to them and I, I told them that I I want to go through this season as like as much with like a team atmosphere because I'm going to be cheering for them. If we're backstage at nationals, I'm, I'm going to be cheering for them to have the best skates possible. Um, and I, I would still love to be able to offer all of my expertise to them to help them become the best they could be because I, you know, I believe in them as skaters and I care about them as friends. So um, it, is a, it's, it is a funny situation, you know, there's no way around that. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, and when it comes to making the Olympics, like this is a sport, like it doesn't matter how good you are, you have to go out and you have to do your job. And if you don't, then it doesn't happen. So we all come from the same starting spot. You know, everybody's given that same opportunity when you're in your starting position and you, we all have that same oppor like equal opportunity to go out and do our job. So nothing is written in stone. There's nothing uh, gonna be given to us. We need to work really hard and we're starting from really far behind. Like we don't have half the amount of uh, competitions under our belt, like not even close. So, um, but I think that, you know, they're all such great people and that we're going we're gonna to find our groove as we move forward. And I think that uh, Dylan was, is my best friend and was my biggest rival as I went through my career. And 
we found a way, found a way to make it, make it work, didn't we, Dylan? So I'm sure. Oh, that I we forgot to tell you, it, I'm making yeah. a comeback. So just so <laughs> oh. you know, uh, <laughs> another stick in the smoke. There, just kidding. Not happening. Anyway, I, I, yeah, I agree with you. I think at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> there's a camaraderie and a respect between athletes. And the nice thing about our sport is we all go do our job one at a time. And I think the, you know, the more everyone can remember that and respect that. Um, it's never easy and it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's important for everybody, everyone's seeing it through their own lens. But I think, uh, one thing that Canadian skating has is as a, as a team, we really support each other. And I think Eric, you've been a huge part of that for our, our Canadian family for so long. And I think, you know, the team's lucky to have you back and they're, they're gaining another great, uh, mentor and veteran with Vanessa. So as much as I'm sure it'll be hard in some ways, you guys are going to be so great for Team Canada, and I'm so excited for you, and I'm sure the, the country is going to be very excited to see it all happen. And thank you so much for being with us for, uh, you know, this exclusive bomb drop, because it's pretty exciting. <laughs> well, thank you. And I think that, you know, and I think everyone can agree, agree is that competition is a healthy competition. It's good for everyone, and it's good for the sport. So I feel and I hope that everyone thinks that same way and with that same mindset that um, good competition just makes everyone better.